Construction engineers use blueprints and analyze complex data to ensure that the building conforms to all safety protocols. Artists have references and color palettes to paint the story they've envisioned. Well, the engineers of today's plane seem to have nothing but a pure adrenaline rush. Oh, and immense love for the Continental IO-550. It seems to me that engineers in the late 90s just loved this type, and there wasn't a better fit for this bird to roar through the skies than this engine. But then came the price, and it was much higher than any of the planes we have reviewed yet. Welcome to Big Metal Birds, and today we'll tell the unique story of Lancer 4. If you watched our video about the Vans RV7, you know that the main driving force for those building their own plane is ultimate freedom. If money is not an issue, you can build the plane of your dreams without compromising on anything. But yeah, there's always that one little but. You still have to comply with the laws of physics. You still have limitations. Limitations in speed, climb, range, passenger count, luggage space, and so on. And that's what bothered Lance Nabauer, a 24-year-old graphic designer from Michigan. While he was frequently flying with his uncle, he dreamed of building his own plane. And remember, those were the 1970s. Trust me, it was much easier to build a plane back then. So, Lance joined the Experimental Aircraft Association and started to eagerly absorb all the knowledge shared by fellow engineers and builders. After a few years of learning, Lance was ready to build his own plane. But the goal was set even higher than building the plane of his dreams. He aimed to build a bird everyone would dream to fly. To ensure the success of his project, Lance made a questionnaire for his fellows at EAA, where they could list all the features their dream bird must have. Around that time, Lance also registered Lancer International, and once the questionnaires were sent back to him, he got to work. Two years of meticulous work resulted in something that instantly sparked interest not only in amateur builders, but all general aviation pilots of that time. The story started with the Lancer 200, which, due to a naming rights conflict, is known as the Lancer 200. This bird looked so sleek and clean, had excellent aerodynamics, and performed better than any home build of that time. And man, it was fast. I mean, look at this. The power plant for the first prototype was taken from the Cessna 150 that Lance bought earlier, and the Model 150 has a cruise of around 80 knots. Lance's plane cruised nearly twice as fast. Yeah, just imagine what a splash it made in the GA world. Some young man casually built a plane that flies twice as fast as the most popular general aviation plane of that time. And let's not talk about how much better it looks. Well, the secret lies in the composite fuselage, and Lance was one of the first to bring it to the kit plane market. Composites allowed for not only a light, but an extremely efficient fuselage from an aerodynamic standpoint. After the first flight at Oshkosh in 1985, and lots of interest from pilots, Lance began selling the Model 200 as a kit. Since our video would be incredibly long if we tried to tell the story of each model, let me just say that, as with Vans, Lancer evolved with each new plane. The Model 200 was replaced with the 235, which had a bigger Lycoming 235 instead of the 200, which was then replaced by the 320 and 360, whose naming followed the same rule. But all of those were two-seaters. And while the performance was truly outstanding, one of the requirements for the dream plane that builders wrote in the questionnaire was the ability to fly with your family. And this is where the story of the Model 4 begins. If you set Model 235 and Model 4 side by side, it might look like the 4 is just a scaled up version. But there's much more. In the early 90s, there was practically no plane in this class that could offer such speed, range, and comfort. I think the main point here is definitely the combination of the 350 horsepower Continental TSIO 550 and the light composite fuselage. Nowadays, we usually see some 100 horsepower Rotax engines in experimental aircraft, but those were different times. So, what do you actually get when you install a twin-turbo engine in a fuselage that weighs just a bit more than 1,700 pounds while empty? Of course, performance is the main selling point of Lancer, so we will get straight to it in a minute. 
But let's just briefly check the design specifications. As we already know, it has a full composite fuselage and an incredibly, for small general aviation, high aspect ratio of the wing, 9 to 1. Also worth mentioning, the wingspan of this bird is just 35 feet. That's one of the smallest wings in its category. But overall, it's a perfectly roomy four-seater, 25 feet long and 8 feet high. Before we dive into the specs, let me also note that there were a few variants of the Model 4 that all share the same flight characteristics, more or less. After the successful launch of the original Model 4, Lancer made a pressurized version called the 4P. And if you want to go even faster and higher than most pilots ever would, there's the Lancer prop jet. Essentially a 4P but with a turboprop engine, such as the Walter M601 pushing 750 horsepower and cruising at 325 knots. And if you think you had it all, there was the Lancer Tigress, just one prototype, but they put an Orenda OE600 V8 engine, which gave it a max speed of 370 knots. But let's get back to the original Model 4. This bird is already almost too fast, so I'm sure the specs below will impress you. The heart of the Model 4 is the six-cylinder, horizontally opposed twin-turbocharged Continental TSIO 550, pushing 350 horsepower. It's a go-to engine choice when you need high performance. Mooney, Cirrus, and Velocity TXL all have this same engine. But what sets the Model 4 apart from all other planes is the ultimate speed. The fuselage is so light that this engine is almost too much for it to handle. Especially on takeoff, you apply the throttle gradually, as if you bump it too much, the rudder simply won't be enough to prevent what's called the P-factor, when the aircraft is pulled to the side when accelerating for takeoff. But once up in the sky, this plane breaks all the records. Quite literally. With its max speed being 300 knots, Lance itself set two speed records in this plane for the transcontinental route east to west and west to east in 1991 with an average speed of 270 knots, and in 1992, a new speed record was set at Oshkosh, 301 knots. So yeah, this bird goes fast. If you don't plan to break another record, your comfortable cruise will be around 280 knots at 24,000 feet, or around 220 knots at 15,000. And with 90-gallon fuel tanks, it will give you a range of 1,090 nautical miles, which gives you the freedom to go from New York to Miami, Chicago to Denver, or Paris to Rome. What's also great about this bird is that all that performance comes nicely packaged in a roomy and cozy cabin. It has one of the best-in-class passenger seats, but it's worth mentioning that there might not be as much legroom as taller people might want to have, especially for longer flights. If you researched Lancer before, you might have heard blood-cooling stories of how this bird stalls, spins, and does everything it can to kill you. Well, let's face it. If you don't know how to fly, even a Cessna will become deadly dangerous. Much like driving a car, the faster you go, the less time you have to react. The Lancer also demands your ultimate attention. Personally, I haven't flown this bird but pilots who love it usually have years of experience flying different aircraft and gradually built the knowledge needed to tame this plane. Yeah, tame is the right word here, I guess. With the bird that wants to go fast, you are the one who sets the limits. Also, there's a good article from the Lancer Owners and Builders Organization and the FAA safety team that analyzed all the accidents. Give it a read. There are pretty interesting charts that will answer many of your questions regarding the safety of these birds. The price differs significantly for pressurized and non-pressurized variants, as well as those with turboprop engines. When it comes to what you get for a set amount of money, I think for this particular plane, it's better to save 100 or 150 grand and stick with the unpressurized Model 4. Plus, it'll be cheaper to maintain. On average, they sell unpressurized Model 4 for around 200 grand, while 4P starts at 320. The Lancer 4 is a truly fascinating aircraft. And if you want to be the fastest one out there, if you want to feel the adrenaline rush every takeoff and landing, you are the right pilot for this plane. See, in this case, it's not a plane for the pilot. It's a pilot who dares to tame the beast. Alright, alright, I might get too poetic here, but let's face it. 
Statistics prove that this plane can be quite dangerous if the pilot is not experienced or careful enough. Thank you very much for joining us today, and I hope you found our video interesting. If you did, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel for more fascinating stories from above the clouds. Fly safe, and until next time.